very good morning to everyone <clears throat> so let us continue with the last class topic uh, that uh, in the last class we got started with the discussion on uh, nuclear rocket propulsion system so on that we were discussing on various mode of uh, that energy creation by using a nuclear atomic source of energy uh, nuclear fission nuclear fusion and isotope decays so with respect to that topic we were discussed on nuclear fissile rockets and, uh, and the principle employed in the system by using a common called as a nuclear reactor core uh, by the application of nuclear fission so that way we had uh, started with the discussion on the last class then we had a discussion on various components of the nuclear reactors like a reflector moderator uh, slow reactors fuel elements and control rods so in addition to that we started with the types of nuclear rockets solid core rocket gas core rocket nuclear salt water rocket nuclear powered electric rocket uh, nuclear pulse rocket nuclear fission fragment rocket then we had discussed on our earlier discussion on solid core rocket uh, with respect to a system known as nerva is acronym of a nuclear engine for rocket vehicle applications that also discussed in the last class um, that that the arrangement is common and all <clears throat> in today's session we are going to continue with that uh, remaining classification start with the first type as gas core nuclear thermal rockets so the earlier one was solid core this one is a gas core so in this system the core of the system that is the component of any nuclear thermal rocket ntr ntr is nothing but nuclear thermal rocket so then this is the core of the ntr uh, which must be the cottage component of the any ntr the core engine the core engine is core part is nothing but the cottage part through which we are allowing the propellant to flow in the previous section we had allowing the liquid hydrogen to flow into this uh, stream of the solid core thereby heating up and then releasing energy and generating high velocity and uh, of course generating thrust and uh, uh, specific numbers so here in this case the core engine is the made up of gas core engine so this is the nuclear thermal rocket systems is the gaseous one and confined with the reactor vessel by using magnetic fields by like clever magnetic fields so in this the as usual here the replacement of solid core with the gas uh, confined reactor vessel uh, with along with the magnetic field is meant for heating the propellant <clears throat> once the propellant is allowed to go through this uh, uh, reactor vessel uh, made up of gaseous core the heat will propellant will be heated up and the heated propellant will be expelled uh, so can as well we be cooling down the plumbing system uh, with this design so so that we can achieve very high specific impulse uh, even we can able to maintain very high thrust so the thrust weight ratio of course solid core india's compared to that one this can be able to do that see the diagram uh, is this very this is uh, the thing is very uh, easy to understand so here we have a uh, uh, heating this heating systems made up of high, high, uh, hydrogen and helium yeah as well we have a turbo pump system meant for pumping the propellant to flow into the system then we have a turbulent vessel that made up of a clever means by vessel connected with a gaseous confined space uh, that is available in the vessel is called as a turbulent uh, confined vessel uh, that contain reactor uh, slow reactors and moderator control rods and all the components that everything together uh, will be filled with a uh, neon gas normally in this system we will be using a neon gas as the gas core system so the neon gas will confine space along with this clever means of magnetic field eh? that is meant for allowing the propellant to heating up so as well you can place the uranium gas the uranium in the form of uh, gaseous form will be filled inside the nuclear reactor and uh, similarly we can allowing the hydrogen propellant same as here also we can able to, we can able to allow the hydrogen propellant to flow through the system uh, of this tended system so that the propellant will be heating up that's the arrangements so instead of having a solid core arrangement here we will be in gaseous confined with this uh, field of some clever system can be arranged along with this gas space with uh, we are using a helium buffer gas as the main gas system as well as uranium also in the form of gaseous form uh, then whenever the 
we are allowing the hydrogen propellant to flow into the system of uh, the propellant system. It will be able to heat the propellant. It will be very high thrust as well as we can maintain high thrust fuels compared to the thrust weightage of the propellant system. System. So, the advantage of this system is uh, since the propellant is uh, what I call the heated propellant is expelling, as well as the pumping can also be actively cooling. Because of that, we can able to achieve very high thrust and very high specific humals compared to solid core and yours. So, the disadvantage is it's something complex. So, here we have gaseous form of uh, arrangement of the system confined space, as well we have uh, uranium gaseous fuel. Along with, we'll be allow everything together in the form of a clever model and that is known as a magnetic field also available. That is a complexity. So this will be the complex available kind of system. Similarly, it can be able to emit a large amount of radioactivities. Uh, it is unavailable for use in the near Earth. So here the uh, ISP ranges are difficult to pick accurately for gas core system, but the best case will be about, uh, we can able to say like, the range of 1,500 seconds as a lower limit up to 3,000 seconds were probably fairly unsubstantial amount of uh, headroom beyond this that. So the thing is, uh, we cannot be able to predict uh, the higher specific symbols directly. That is one of the disadvantages. But uh, even then, we could be able to guess uh, the range will be around 1,500 seconds to 3,000 seconds. So these are all the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, gas core nuclear rocket system, nuclear thermal rocket system. So next variant is uh, salt water content, a uh, nuclear salt water thermal rocket system. So here also a continuous fission, the same action of the nuclei, salt water solution within the rocket engine. Yeah, this uh, fission, fission chain reaction is kept from spreading back into the fuel lines uh, by the pollution of nuclear salt. Since you are providing nuclear salt solution, uh, it's painted the flow rate at a particular rate that's so that they can be able to push us the fission zone just back of the nozzle so that uh, the temperature of the engine should be uh, can be controllable it will be tolerable within the limit so that is arrangements so here we will be having a uh, what i call the salt water content of uh, nuclear uranium and other system of fuel sorry uh, the fuel can be used with nuclear fuels and we will be allowing the water high to to flow through the system so because of that, there will be a possibility of a velocity, high expelling velocity of the nozzle flow will achieve. But the only thing is, uh, since we are providing a fault water content, uh, we can able to maintain the particular flow rate of the fusion, uh, which can able to push us the fusion zone just back of the nozzle. Gas core system, and with the, we will be having a salt water content uh, along with this uranium. Uh, or uh, plutonium kind of uh, nuclear reactive material uh, along with that once it will be available it will be an to have the salt water content tends to have the reaction uh, that will be meant for expelling the gas in propellant into the high velocity as well as because of the mass flow rate content uh, can, uh, we can able to control the mass flow rate so that the entire system of within the temperature of the system will be controllable within with tolerable limits so that is the arrangement of the nuclear salt water control system so the advantages so here uh, here the peak neutron flux or that means liberation of the neutron as a particular uh, rate of uh, area of the case that will be outside the uh, vehicle uh, this is more vigorous than they could be was to house them in a vessel so additionally a condensator can also only allow a small amount of percentage of the fuel is to undergo fusion at any time uh, otherwise it will happen it will overheat and melt down so this is in this nuclear salt water reactor nswr in this uh, fission reaction in this this uh, nuclear salt water reaction is a dynamic one so the because of that uh, the reaction products are exhausted into space uh, there is no limit uh, for that uh, proportion of the fission field that reacts so that also very one of the advantages uh, this is the this many ways this makes a nuclear salt water reactors or thermal reactors it will be like look like a hybrid system between fission and fission reactors and fission what I call the fission bombs. So this is one of the advantage of this uh, nuclear salt water uh, reacting system. The disadvantage is uh, here as I mentioned, there will be a possible radioactive isotopes. The vessel's exhaust would contain radioactive isotopes. 
uh, if it is uh, dispersed traveling only assault distance, it will be also falling with a high speed. So the radioactive element will be, the reaction will be there with the high velocity, high speed of the system with the, along with the exhaust. That is one of the additional things. So next variant is a nuclear powered electric rockets. So this is something like ion engines. So we can say electric rockets such as ion engines uh, also have high specific mass. So, but uh, even then the ion engines having high specific mass, but uh, thrust is very low uh, because of the reason, the low quantity of reaction mass of an electric rockets. So as of the truth, therefore we can, one combat system we are using, uh, that is meant for megawatts and above, they think we are using, so we, what is the idea is we are coupling a fish, fission reactor along with an ion engine. So this is called as uh, a combined system, nuclear powered electric rockets, nuclear rocket, a nuclear fission rocket along with one ion, ion engines. So we can, uh, along with, if you want, you can add uh, along with the hall level test also. So combination of these two, <laughs> one nuclear reactor, so nuclear reactor, the thermal reactor, along with one uh, electric thruster, that is called as nuclear powered electric reactors. The combination of these two engines together. So as I mentioned earlier, even the high specific mass ion engine can generate, but thrust level is low. But uh, in order to overcome that kind of system, if you provide this kind of system, we can able to provide high specific impulse, uh, uh, putting a lot of stress, and that is in the terms of high temperature, temperature thermal stresses on the reactor design. So this uh, disadvantage is that uh, these are all nearly all of consumable electric reactors, all very low designs, even with nuclear power. So they cannot launch payloads from Earth. So they are only suitable for using the space application. They cannot be able to use it in the launch the payload from the Earth. That is one of the different ways, uh, because in terms of they may not provide that much uh, time period of uh, traveling time uh, for many space missions. That is also one of the uh, disadvantage of the uh, nuclear powered electric rocket systems. So next variant is nuclear pulse rocket. So this is also called as Orient rocket. So here uh, we are using a nuclear bomb. We are using a nuclear bombs to provide thrust via a large pusher plates or by using a, a leading sail called as Medusa. So this vehicle is called as MPCV, that is a Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle. So Orion MPCV, that is a Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle. It is a, also a spacecraft. So it is also intended to carry a crew of up to four astronauts to the destination of beyond the low Earth orbit. So this is under development by NASA for launch on the space launch systems. So Orion is currently intended to facilitate human exploration of asteroids and of mass as well as to provide of and delivering a number of crews or supplies from the ISS if needed. So, so normally that was designed for a four, four astronauts. It can able to carry a crew of up to four astronauts. That is a kind of a bomb uh, to provide thrust. It uses a nuclear bomb that is called a nuclear pulse rocket. So the advantage is it is able to provide a truly enormous thrust at high specific high impulse. But it uh, is not able to scale down very well, so we can use uh, thousands of nuclear bombs needed. That is one of the major drawbacks. So because of that, there will be a radioactive fallout of exhaust as well. That is very important problem. So it is unsuitable. Again, it is also unsuitable for use of a from air surface to launch into Earth surfaces. So we can use only specific space missions. So here we need to have a tricky engineering system. So design as well as even then, we can able to have symbols for you know, up to the level of 10,000 seconds. But for that, the designs will vary. We need to go for a very technically tricky engineering system. Uh, system need to be adopted. So that is one of the design of the systems. So that, uh, the finally, we come to go for the nuclear fission fragment rocket. Uh, there is the totally fragment design, which is a uh, number of nuclear fission fragments for a uh, highly fissionable isotopes. So if you are using americium-242, and if you're using that kind of uh, highly fissionable isotopes of the radioactive elements, uh, we can have a totally speculative fission fragment design can be used. So it can be able to generate thrust. So if you're using a magnetic field, they can able to generate as well directing the thrust level of operations. So it can be able to generate high specific impulse, but yeah, that is very high complex and uh, it can produce a fairly low thrust. 
So ISP maybe in the terms of uh, uh, more than thousand uh, thousand seconds of uh, what do you call it? ten lakhs sorry ten lakh seconds of uh, <coughs> sorry ten lakh thousand seconds of uh, ISP can be achieved, but even then the thrust is very low. So this is a comparison chart. Huh? This gives idea about the solid core and nuclear powered gas core, nuclear pulse, salt water, and fission fragment rockets. ISP uh, injection relative thrust, high thrust for solid and nuclear is low. Gas core also high. Nuclear pulse is high, extremely high. So since you are using bombs, thousands of bombs can be used. Huh? So salt water is also very high, and uh, fission fragment rockets are very moderate in level of performance. The ISP 850,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,500, 3,000 seconds. A year more than 10,000 seconds, one lakh thousand seconds of the systems. So in general, we can go for uh, overall comparing of these all nuclear rocket systems, the advantages of high specific impulse, 2 to 10 times of that of the chemical systems. But low specific mass is required. That is also one of the advantages. High power allows high thrust. So you can power ex power control, uh, what they call controllable power with high thrust operation, high thrust to weight ratio. You can use any of the propellant can be used. Safety, the reduced radiation for some reasons that is one of our advantages. But uh, politically, we need a lot of uh, restriction in usage of this system. That is, the political issues are there. Similarly, social issues also there. Uh, if it is, we have uh, enough. Uh, Tricky engineering or technical advancement. Eh? We are providing a low technology radiance, but that is also one of the disadvantages. Uh, shielding, as you know, radioactive elements. That is one of the radioactive elements. That is the shielding is the problem. Then uh, the high inert mass. Uh, these are all the overall view of a uh, um, nuclear rocket propulsion, nuclear thermal rocket propulsion system. So as we had a discussion on the nuclear variant types of Operation generating a thrust, fission, fusion, and decay. And using the fission uh, operation of energy creation, that is meant for heating the propellant. When we are allowing any type of propellant, maybe mostly, mostly we are using hydrogen as a liquid propellant uh, is allowed to flow. So, based on that, we'll be having gas core, solid core, pulse rockets, and uh, nuclear electric power rockets, and uh, nuclear salt water content, and nuclear fission fragment rockets. So our classifications. So everywhere the, we are allowing the propellant to go through this um, core element, and it will be heated up and expelling out with the high thrust, high velocity, and achieving high specific impulse. Even then, that compared to that uh, thrust level is low, we can able to achieve high specific impulse. So these are all the uh, overall view of any electro nucleo thermal rocket propulsion system or nuclear thermal propulsion systems. <clears throat> Any doubt on this, you feel free to ask. <clears throat> 